an important occlusal detail for crowns on implants. Why is it important to pay close attention to how crowns placed on dental implants occlude? This is Doug Brown, creator of BiteFX. Over the years, we've produced hundreds of animations in collaboration with over 50 dental experts and broadcast over 100 webinars featuring leading dentists. We've amassed a tremendous amount of knowledge in the animations and webinar recordings, so we're sharing that knowledge with you in bite-sized chunks. In this video, we'll give a quick explanation of why dentists need to give special attention to the occlusion of crowns placed on implants. This should be a well-known fact to all dentists, but it never hurts to have a reminder, right? Dental implants are an awesome tool which allow dentists to replace missing teeth with crowns. Placed well, they can last a lifetime and greatly improve the patient's aesthetic appearance and function without the awkwardness of a removable prosthetic. However, the longevity of implants depends on several factors, such as good quality and quantity of bone in the target location, surgically clean insertion, non-rejection of the implant's material by the body, correct placement of the implant, and ensuring the implant is not overloaded. We're going to look at one aspect of that last factor, overloading the implant. There are several ways an implant can be overloaded. For example, if the implant is inserted at the wrong angle, so it experiences off-axial forces. But we're just going to look at how the crown is designed relative to the other teeth in the mouth. Although our teeth feel like they are firmly embedded in our upper and lower jaw bones, that's not quite true. Our teeth are attached to the bone by thousands of tiny ligaments called periodontal ligaments, often abbreviated to PDL. We show the PDLs in this animation in red, and we greatly exaggerate their size so you can understand the principle of how they work. When our teeth close together, the PDLs provide a slight cushion to that impact. Now, when a tooth is lost and replaced by an implant, there is no PDL. The implant screws into the bone and the bone heals and firms up around the implant. If the crown is designed as an exact replacement of the original tooth, like a crown placed on top of a natural root, here's what happens when the teeth come together. A well-designed occlusion will have all the teeth contacting simultaneously, distributing the forces evenly across all the contacting teeth. We're just showing the forces on three of the teeth at the center of our view, but there would be forces on all or most of the teeth. This would be good, except that the non-implant teeth have the little bit of give as they are suspended by the periodontal ligaments. Because the natural teeth give and the implant doesn't give, the crown on the implant ends up bearing the majority of the force. This will likely be experienced as discomfort in the opposing tooth, that may not be felt or detected with a simple tap-tap-tap test. Over time, the implant experiences overloading, one of the causes of long-term implant failure. So how is this problem avoided? Quite simply by making the crown very slightly shorter than the natural teeth. There's just enough space that the tap-tap-tap test with marking paper will not mark the implant tooth. But when the teeth are brought together and the patient clenches, the implant tooth will come in contact and take an equal share of the clenching force. So, a small detail in the design and manufacture of crowns to go on implants, but an important factor for patient comfort and implant longevity. Understanding and mastering these concepts is best learned from the experts at good CE institutions. While you're readying to take on those extra studies, may I suggest a great way of giving yourself a firm foundation? If you'd like to keep learning with animations like the ones you saw in this video, then we'd suggest using our study aid in conjunction with Dr. Dawson's definitive book, Functional Occlusion, From TMJ to Smile Design. The animations walk side by side each chapter to give you the best visual and content-rich learning experience to take you to a solid understanding of the TMJ and occlusion. The book is available through Amazon or through Dr. Dawson's publishing company, Widium, and the study aid is available through us. I've put the links in the description below.